Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Please click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture today will come from 1 John 4, 1 through 6, and it reads, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. <clears throat> Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint, and the world listens to them. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Thank God for the reading of his holy word. We Christians have the power living on the inside of us. And that power living on the inside of us is the spirit of God. How do we know that? Because the Bible tells us so. Jesus living on the inside of us is greater than Satan who is living in the world. So the scripture says that Satan is like a roaring lion. Satan is not a roaring lion. He just wants you to believe that he's a roaring lion. But Satan is a fake and a phony. He is always raising his ugly head to see who he can get to be on his side. For example, look at all of the mess around our upcoming election. Uh, Satan is making a lot of noise and causing a lot of chaos. But we Christians, those who are called by the name of Jesus Christ, will not be defeated because we have victory over Satan. My Bible tells me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ. <clears throat> greater is he that is in me Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, than he that is in the world. Satan's like a roaring lion, Roaming to and fro, seeking who he may devour, the Bible tells us so. Many souls have been his prey to fall in some weak hour. But God has promised us today his overcoming power. On the day of Pentecost, a rushing mighty wind blew into the upper room and baptized all of them with a power greater than any earthly foe. I'm so glad I've got it too. I'm gonna let the whole world know. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, than he that is in the world. God is greater, he's greater, 
God is greater. He's greater than the wisest man. Greater than the power of sin. Greater than the gates of hell. Greater than any tongue can tell. Greater than the richest king. Greater than anything. He's greater. 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 Oh, greater. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God is greater. He's greater. God is greater. He's greater than the wisest man, greater than the power of sin, greater than the gates of hell, greater than any tongue can tell, greater than the richest king, greater than anything. He's greater, 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 oh, greater, greater. Father God, we thank you now that you are greater. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you are the humble but great God. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us and created us just a little lower than the angels, Father God. We ask you to bless us now, keep us now, and forgive us now, Father God, of those things that we have done that are not pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us and continue to walk with you. Bless this your word, Father God, as your word goes forth, that old habits will be rolled away, old burdens will be thrown away, that lives will be made the better, Father God, and we, Father God, will serve you. Bless us with discernment, bless us with wisdom in these tough times. It's in the name of Jesus of Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for another privilege. We thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church at our remote location. Thank you for being a part of our service on today. We thank God for all that he's doing with you, through you, and, and about you. Father God, we thank God. We thank God for who he is. And he is the great God. He is the awesome God. He is God all by himself. And we honor him and we worship him today. Again, we're in Matthew chapter 24. We're talking about these end times that we find ourselves in right now. But Matthew digs deeper and he digs into the future of the, these end times. The book is in the New Testament, St. Matthew chapter 24, verses number 23 through 26 is where we are today. Matthew chapter 24, verses 23, 24, 25, and 26. Matthew chapter 24, verses 23 through 26. We praise God for who he is and what he's already done. We've been talking to you about these things that are yet to come and these things that we talk about on today are yet in the future. But we always realize that we see the growth pains. Not only do we see the growth pains, we see the birth pains of this end time scenario, this thing that Jesus says will come. Jesus is speaking in Matthew chapter 24, and Jesus is saying to us, these things will come. He says, when you see uh, things that, that are signs of this time, just know that this is not the end yet. The, the end has not come. He talks about the fact that we will have pestilence, we will have famines, we will have earthquake in unfamiliar places. He talks about the fact that nations will rise against nations. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And today we want to talk about the deception of the devil. During this time when people are looking for things, during this time when people are trying to find a way out, the devil is real. Satan is on the warpath and he's looking for ways to fool you ways of getting your attention, ways of doing things that will make you think that he is the Christ. So here we are today in Matthew chapter 24, verses 23 through 26. When you found it, you will discover these words. 
Then if anyone say to you, look, here, he, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. If even the elect say, if even the elect would they deceive them. See, I told you beforehand. Therefore, if if you therefore, if they say to you, "Look, he's in the desert," do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. Do not believe it. I want to talk about do not believe it. Do not believe it. Do not believe it. When I looked uh, for a demonstration for today, I found one that would justify the occasion. Vitamin D3 is what we need in order to have our immune system, our heart system. Vitamin D3 is what we need. And there are many types and many brands of vitamin D3. You see, we get vitamin D3 from the sun, but those of us who have dark pigmentation, dark skin, cannot get enough vitamin D3 from the sun. So what we have to do is go to the doctor, and when we go to the doctor, they do a blood test, they check our vitamin D3. And once they check our vitamin D3, if it is not in the range of 50 to 75, then we take what is known as a hormone, a supplement of vitamin D3, meaning that it is a supplement from the sun rays. So we take these pills to get our vitamin D up. Our vitamin D3 is what we need. And when we take this vitamin D3, we want to make sure that it is potent. When we talk about false gods, when we talk about false Christ, when we talk about false prophets, when you look at these bottles, both of them says vitamin D3. Mm -hmm. Both of them says 5,000 IUs. Both of them would make you think they serve the same purpose. Both of them have on their labels that, that they are 125 MCGs. Both of them have 5,000 IUs. Both of them are labeled vitamin D3. So you would think that they both serve the same purpose. And yes, they do. They both serve the same purpose. Taking each of them will serve your purpose for the moment. But when you look deep into the ingredients... One of them, I have Spring Valley here, and I have a, a Nature Made here. When we look at both of these bottles, one may be bigger than the other. That's because it has more pills in this one than it does in this one. And we don't have a problem with that. But the problem we have when we look deep into the ingredients, <clears throat> right on the right side of the bottle, on this one, the Spring Valley, it says 625% of daily value. 625% of daily value. Now, I don't know what that means. You don't know what that means, most of us. But when I look at this bottle, it says 1,250% daily value. When I look at both of these bottles, it appears at first glance they are the same. And not to mention when I take a peel out and look at them, both of them are pretty much uh, clear. Both of them are pretty much uh, goldish clear in color. So that doesn't get my attention. But when I really look at the ingredients and I see this daily value, it says on this one, 625%. It says on this one, 1,250%. To most of us, that wouldn't matter. And that's how it is in the text. <laughs> to most people, it doesn't matter as long as we get our feel for that moment. Mm -hmm. 
To most people, it doesn't matter whether a, whether a prophet is a real prophet or not, as long as they can fulfill the moment. You see, people today are looking, they are, are checking out, they are investigating, and they are looking for something they can call God or something they can depend on as Jesus Christ. But the text declares that we are living in a day and we are headed for a day where false Christs and false prophets will show up. Look at the text in, in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, verse number 23. He says, and, and then, then if anyone say to you, look, here is the Christ. Look, here's the Christ. We've already seen people like David Koresh that have said, I am Christ. There are still people walking around even today that says, I am the Christ. You see, the word Christ means the anointed one. The word Christ means that he is the Messiah. He is the one who has come to deliver us from this world. So people are looking for things and people that will deliver them from this world, that will deliver them from their circumstances. And let me tell you, let me tell you, it, it is horrifying to think that if the pandemic had not come, that Mr. Trump would still be president. It is horrifying to think that a man who will, who will stand and say, I can save you without a silly cross. One who has the audacity to fool millions and millions to continue to follow him because they don't see the fact that he's nothing like Christ. One who can say that he has done more for the Christian life and more for Christians than Jesus Christ himself. How ignorant of a statement that can be. It's an ignorant statement because you can't have Christianity without having Christ. And you can't have real Christianity without having the real Christ. The Christ, the Son of God, the Christ, the anointed one. And there are people who really feel like that the president of the United States is the Christ. You can tell they feel like he's the Christ because millions upon millions say that if he tells them to wear a mask, then he will, they will wear a mask. If he tells them that coronavirus is, is real, then, then they will believe that the coronavirus is real. Let me tell you, over 250,000 people later, over 9 million people getting sick and are, 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 are in the midst of this coronavirus that are, don't have been contracted this virus, over 9 million, and they don't believe that the coronavirus is real. There are empty tables empty seats at the table. And in some households, there are empty tables because the coronavirus is real. I just say to you today that sometimes <laughs> it looks like it has the same potency. It looks like it's the best you could find. And if that president is the best president we can find, the United States of America is hard up for a president. We're hard up for a leader. When we look at the text, we find that Jesus prophesied that these things would become real, that these things would come to pass. Jesus prophesies. He says, if anyone say to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, what he's saying here is, there will come a day, and that day is upon us. Well, men will say, look, he is the chosen one. Look, God, I told you that this word Christ means the anointed one. They will say that he is the anointed one. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that he's not the one. Because the Christ I serve, the God I serve, the Jesus I serve, the author of Christianity that I serve is a loving God. He is one who would tell us the right thing to do. He is one that will tell us that we are going the right way when we're going the wrong way. And he will tell us we're going the wrong way when we're going the wrong way. Yes. He is the one who, who will bring truth. He says to us that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I really don't understand. I don't understand how men, women, boys, and girls 
have come to a conclusion that I can follow this man all my way to the promised land. I don't understand how this is not even something that's hard to understand. It is not hard to know that he's headed in the wrong direction. It is not hard to know that a man that says it's still a hoax, a man that says that it's not real, a man who says we're turning the corner, a man who says that, that I am the way, I am the one that you need to follow. The text says that there will be men who will rise up in these last and evil days, there will be men who will rise up and they will say that I'm the one. First of all, I just want to tell you, if I have to constantly remind Sister Davis that I'm the man of the house, I'm not the man of the house. <laughs> if I have to constantly tell her that, that I am the man of the house, let me tell you, brothers, if you have to constantly remind your wife that you are the man of the house, let me just share with you, you are not the man of the house. If I have to constantly remind the New Beginning Church, I'm the pastor here, I have to get on a soapbox and, and remind them I am the pastor, let me just tell you, I'm not the pastor. If I have to constantly remind people in the neighborhood that I'm the preacher in the neighborhood, I'm not the preacher in the neighborhood. If I have to constantly remind the people in my neighborhood that I'm the spiritual man in the neighborhood, I'm not the spiritual man in the neighborhood. If you have to walk around and tell folk you are a Christian and that you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you gotta quit, you got to check yourself or you wreck yourself. Because if you have to remind people that you're saved, if you have to remind people that you are of God, then you have to make sure that you are of God. So in the text, in Matthew chapter 24, verse number 23, Jesus says that there will come a day that they will say, Christ is here, or Christ is there, Jesus says, do not believe them. He says, don't believe them. He says, don't believe them. Verse 23, he says, don't believe them. I'm saying to you today, don't believe them. If a man has to tell you he's Christ, if a man has to tell you he's a great prophet, if a man has to get on the radio, get on the TV, and tell you that he's a great man of God, then he's not a great man of God. He's a phony. He's a false prophet. He is a false Christ. Verse number 24, chapter 24, Matthew says, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible, even the elect. Remember now, remember now, the church has already been raptured when he refers to this part of the body. He, he refers to this part of history. The church has already been raptured. The church has already gone on to be with the Lord. That's why it's imperative today that you are born again. It's imperative that, that you give your life to Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's imperative today that you reborn, you become reborn again. It's imperative today that you have this rebirth experience that only comes through Jesus Christ. It says, for false Christs, and in my Bible, when Jesus is spoken of, the word Christ is in capital letters. The word Christ, the C is capitalized because he is Christ and he's Christ alone. There is no other Christ like our Lord. There is no other, there is no other one who is the Holy One. There is no other one who is the Messiah that's going to take us out of this world. There is none like him. Sister Davis read in her devotional uh, uh, presentation, she read that if no one, if, if a man or a woman does not obey the Lord, does not acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Christ, then don't believe them simply because they are not the Christ. Mm -hmm. There are many preachers. There, there are many prophets. He says it in the text. He says false Christ will come. They, first of all, want you to think that they're Christ. Mm -hmm. And then he says, secondly, False prophets will come. They will rise up and they will show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. 
What I'm saying to you is, when you, when you look at vitamin D3, and you look at one that has 625% daily use, and then you look at one who has, has a, a, a 1,250 daily use percentage, my question to you is, which one you want? My question to you is, which one would you rather have? The same question that I pose to you concerning these vitamin D3 vitamins, I pose the same question to you this morning. Which Christ do you want? Do you want the real Christ? Or do you want a fake Christ? Do you want somebody that's going to tell you you're right when you're wrong? Do you want somebody who's going to tell you you're right when you're wrong and as two left shoes? Or do you want Christ? Do you want the real Christ? Do you want Jesus Christ himself? There is no other anointed one. There's no other Messiah other than Jesus the Christ. He says false prophets and false Christs will come. These false Christs will stand and boldly tell you that they are Christ. You don't have to look for another. I am he. And then he moved and he says that there will be false prophets. And these false prophets will prophesy for their own personal gain. I told you that I told you several times before that, that if you send me money for my handkerchief, send me money for my towel that I wipe my face with, you will get some snot, you will get some, you will get some some sweat, you will, you will get some some even will get blood, but that's all you're gonna get. You're not gonna get the anointing of God from my towel. Jesus the Christ is the anointed one. Amen. Jesus the Christ is the only true savior. And during these terrible times when we're going through stuff, preachers have to stand flat-footed and tell people that Jesus is the one. Amen. And he is the Christ himself. Yes. He's the only Christ. He's the only one. And then there are men who are false prophets will tell you that they got the key and they got the answer. Just send me a little money. The question that I have, why do I have to pay for what God has given you for free? Why do I have to, if, if you're in God, if you're in Christ, you ought to be willing to go into nursing homes. You ought to be willing to go into hospitals and, and shut them completely down because you are the anointed. I challenge every prophet, every false prophet, I, I challenge you this morning to go to MD Anderson and shut it down. Just go from one bed to the other. Go to one room to the other and shut it down. Every false prophet ought to be able to prophesy those things of God, but they can't prophesy those things of God because they are false prophets. False prophets are in it for themselves. False prophets are in it for the money. False prophets is in it, are in it for the prestige. Jesus says false Christ and false prophets will come. But look at what he says. He says that they will do miracles. They will do signs. They will do wonders right before mankind. Let me tell you, there, there are some false prophets and there are some false Christs all around us and they are doing miracles. They are doing great exploits. They are doing things that we've never seen before. And people are getting so amazed with them. They are being, they are being so amazed. People are so amazed with what men are doing today until they get caught up on stuff. Men, and when they walk away, they got fat pockets. When they walk away, they drive what they want to drive, and, and they drive it off your money. Jesus says they will come. And when they come, they will do miracles. They will do signs. And people will believe in them because of their miracles and their signs. And they are just fooling people. They are just taking your money. They're just doing things that, that, that make you, uh, your, your spine quiver. They're doing things that put goosebumps down your arm. They're doing things that, that you, you have never seen before. But I challenge every false prophet and every false Christ to do it as Christ has done it. Jesus is coming back. 
And we're getting closer and closer every second. Jesus is coming back. Matter of fact, nothing else has to happen in order for Jesus to come back. That don't have to have, that doesn't have to be one other thing to take place in order for Jesus to come back. We just got to keep preaching the gospel, keep calling men to faith in Jesus Christ. As we, as we preach the gospel, as we lift up Jesus, Jesus draws all men to himself. Amen. False prophets will come, false, false Christ will come, and they will show great signs and wonders that will deceive many. Many men are so deceived today off of simple stuff. They are deceived off of simple stuff. Whenever somebody say to you that I am Christ, run. That's right. Whenever they say to you that, that I, am the, I am the Messiah, leave them alone. Yes. I don't care if it's your daddy. I don't care if it's your friend. Leave them alone. Give them some distance. Give them some space. Pray for them that they will be saved. Yes. The thing about it, one day, preacher had preached for 35 years. And after preaching for 35 years, in one of his messages, he got saved. Mm. He, he had preached for 35 years, and in, one, in the midst of one of his messages, he received Christ as his Savior. What I'm telling you is men who are false prophets, men who are false Christ, will great, do great things that will amaze people. They are great orators. Mm. They don't stumble through their message like I do. They, they can speak well. They, they can amaze the people. They are great speakers. The problem I have today, Mr. Trump is not even a great speaker and people are fooled. He, he's not even a great speaker. He's jealous of President Obama because he's a great orator. He's jealous of President Obama because he draws crowds. He's measuring himself today to Hillary Clinton, and that story has already gone. That ship has already sailed. Mm -hmm. Jealousy, envy, false prophets. And they do wonders and do great things. And, and then when you look at the stimulus package, this man refused the stimulus check to go out unless he signed his name to it. False prophets and false Christ always want name recognition. They always want to be able to say, look what I have done. And what he says is, I want to give a bigger package than the Republicans and the Democrats. And because I want to give a bigger package than the Republicans and Democrats, and they won't let me have my way, nobody's getting anything until after the election. Well, one thing is right. When the election is over, <laughs> when the election is over, he's already told you he's going to fly off to Germany. He's already told you that he's a false prophet. And when the false prophet lose the election, what he's going to do is disappear from this country. And we will all know that he's been a Russian spy all this time. When you look at the text, it says that they will do great wonders, do great things. And they will even, if it was possible, they would even fool, even deceive the elect. Mm -hmm. You see, I told you on last week, there will be some that have been born again. This is not the elect of God as we know it today. The elect of God will be the ones that have gotten out of here on the first flight of the rapture. That's why you got to be born again. You have to be saved. You need to get out of here in the rapture. He's saying this elect would be deceived because some will be saved in the midst of the tribulation. And they become the, the chosen or the elect in the tribulation. And those who are caught up in the tribulation will have wisdom and knowledge and they will have a spirit of discernment that they won't follow the crisis, the, 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 the false Christ and the false prophets because God is now speaking to them. It says that these guys would do such miracles and such wonders if it was possible. In other words, it's not possible. Those who are the elect, those who are chosen of God, those who are saved will not be fooled by these false prophets and false Christ. Jesus says in verse 23, verse 25, I told you. He said, now I told you this before. Jesus says to me, says to them, my message is consistent. 
He says, not only is my message consistent, I've already told you before, and I'm telling you again, that false Christ and false prophets will come and they would do great miracles. They would do great signs. They would do great feats and they would do things that would amaze people and they would deceive many. And if it was possible, they would deceive even the, the elect of God, the elect's sake. This is for the elect's sake. You have to make sure that you're born again. Make sure that you're saved. Make sure that you're living for the Lord because if you take your eye off the Lord, you will become just like Simon the sorcerer. In the book of Acts, you find the disciples walking around and people are being blessed and God is doing great things in the midst of their blessings. And, and when God is doing great signs and miracles, Simon the sorcerer walks up and he wants to buy some of the Holy Spirit. And that's how men are today. They want to purchase the Holy Spirit. Well, first of all, the Holy Spirit is God himself. Secondly, the Holy Spirit cannot be purchased. Thirdly, there is no price you can put on the Holy Spirit. He is God. He is God by himself. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are one. They are three in one. And so there will be no purchase. And people think that money can buy anything. People think that money can buy the preacher. People think that money can buy God. People think that money can buy anything. Simon the sorcerer found out because the disciple told him that there will become a day where you and your money will perish. That's why I don't understand people that don't return tithes back to the Lord. Return back to the Lord what the Lord has blessed you with. God can do more with your 10% than you can do with your 90%. Yes. If you believe that money answers all things, give it back to the Lord so he can give it back to you. Yeah. He saved you on your car maintenance. He, he saved you on your, your, your doctor bills. He saved you. He, he blesses us without giving us money, but he keeps us from spending money. Yes. He's God. The Bible says he will rebuke the devour for your sake. When you look at the text, it says that he would deceive men. And Jesus says, I haven't told you now. Not only have I told you before, I'm telling you again that false Christ and false prophets are coming. And when they come, they're going to do great things, great miracles. They're going to blow people's minds. Mm -hmm. But don't you be fooled. Stop looking for a new thing. Yes. Stop looking for a new trend. Stop looking for something different. And just trust God and his word. When we trust God and his word, we have the real deal. We have the, the right thing. When we trust God and his word, God is able to bless us in spite of us. But everybody's looking for something new, something amazing, something different. You know, that's why, that's why people become apostles. Because they want to have a different name than everybody else. They, they want a different title. They want, they want people to recognize them differently. Because they, they want to be called by by their title. That's why I'm, I'm very I'm very intentional. I'm very intentional when I introduce myself. My name is Matthew David. My name is Matt David, and that is it. Only do I refer myself as the pastor when I'm talking to a new beginning member or a prospective member. It's simply because God wants us to love the Lord so much so until we get caught up with him and we be amazed with who God is and what God does. Yes. Stop being amazed with men. Stop letting men and women blow your mind. Be amazed with who God is. Yes. God amazes me every day. He amazes me because while I sleep in the very image of death, he keeps me. Let me tell you, I was in that very image of death last night. Had an extra hour or two. I was very in, in that very image of death. Snowing, slobbering, and sleep. In the midst of the image of death, I could have slept on out of here, but God amazed me this morning. New mercies he give me every morning. Mercies I do not deserve. Mercy I can't be equipped for. He gives me new mercies every morning. And I thank God for it. He gives me new mercy. He, gives me new, he gave you new mercies too. If you're here today and you're on the top of the ground and the ground's not on top of you, God has given you new mercies. I'm amazed with God. I'm 
not I'm not too amazed with men. I, mean, I know men can do some great things, but I'm amazed with who God is. When I see the sun makes his way every day, it, it, it does it like clockwork. Matter of fact, he sets the clock. God has the power to make the sun move from the eastern hemisphere to the western hemisphere and go down around the same time. Every day he's God. I'm amazed with God. When, when I inhale and I exhale and I'm able to keep living, I'm amazed with God. You better get amazed with God. You, got, you better get amazed with God. And when you get amazed with God, you show it in your walk. You show it in your talk. You act like you're amazed with God. When men see you, they know that you're amazed with God and not amazed with men. Amen. It says, I told you before. I told you that, that these things are going to happen. Then verse 26, it says, Therefore, if they say to you, Look, he's in the desert. Do not go out. Do not go out. Don't even look. Or look, he is in the inner room. Do not believe them. People will tell you that they know where God is. Number one, because they're false Christ. Number two, because they're false prophets. And number three, they want you to think they know something that you don't know. People always want to know something that no one else knows. I'm just convinced that if I just know what God wants me to know, I'm pleased and I'm satisfied with that. Amen. I said to the New Beginning Church on a regular basis that, that to pray for the pastors during this pandemic. Pray for the pastor. Please pray for me during this pandemic that I will lead with discernment. That I will know when to open, when not to open, know when, when to start and when not to start, know when to take the next step and when not to take the next step. What I'm saying to you, I don't know what I'm doing in a pandemic because I've never lived through one before. But I do know I am the one that's chosen at this day and time to keep the people safe. So pray for the pastor. Pray for the preacher that the preacher won't get ahead of God. Pray for the preacher that the preacher won't walk too far behind God. Pray for the preacher that the preacher won't get beside himself and act like he is God. I don't know what I'm doing. Only God knows what to do in the time that it is to be done. So he says, whatever you do, if they say he's in the de desert, don't go there. Don't go looking. Don't even go out the door. Don't go... Go look. See, people want you to think that Jesus is coming back and he's coming where nobody can see him. He's coming where these false prophets will be the only one that will know that he's coming. But the God I serve doesn't operate like that. <laughs> The, the one that he, and in next week's lesson, we will find out when he comes back, every person going to see him. It's not going to be a secret. Nobody is going to have to tell me to go looking for God. God is going to show up. Jesus is going to show up, and everybody is going to see him. Everybody is going to see him. And when he shows up, when he shows up, those who pierced him in his side will see him. Those who killed him will see him. Jesus, I'm talking about Jesus, Mary's oldest child. Jesus, God's only begotten son. Jesus, the horse pouring in the valley. Jesus, yeah, Jesus, the morning star. I'm talking about Jesus, the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Jesus, the Christ, is going to make his way back on the scene. Amen. He did it for you and he did it for me on a skull hill called Calvary. Amen. He died between two thieves. He, he died a horrible death. They hung him high. They dropped him low. They raised him up. He died between two thieves. That Jesus is the Christ I serve. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. I'm looking for that Jesus to show up again. Yes. Early that third day morning. <laughs> 
He got up with all power. He got up with all power in his hand. He has the right potency. He is Jesus himself. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus is going to crack the sky one day. The Bible says at the trump of God, the Bible says at the voice of the archangel, he will be gathered in midair. And those who died in Christ will rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up in midair. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18 says, and we will forever be with the Lord. That's the Christ I'm looking forward to. He didn't leave in a limousine. He ain't coming back in a limousine. He didn't leave in a BMW. He's not coming back in a BMW. I'm looking for Jesus who left here on a cloud to come back on a cloud. And he's going to rapture this church up. Yes, he is. He's going to rapture this church up and we will forever be with the Lord. I'm talking to you today if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior. This is a good moment. This is a good opportunity for you to get to know Jesus by just believing the story that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose early that third day morning. His name is Jesus. This is your invitation. This is your moment to get to know him just as you are, regardless of where you've been, regardless of who you've been with, regardless of what you have done, this is your moment. You can get to know Jesus for yourself. Regardless if mama knows him, daddy knows him, auntie knows him, neighbor knows him, you need to know him for yourself. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. This is your moment. If you never received Jesus as your savior, will you just join me in prayer, invite him into your life, and ask him to be a part of your life so you won't have to go through the tribulation. You won't have to worry about the tribulation. You can be saved right here today. You can be born again. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Will you join me right now in just bowing your head and inviting Christ into your life? Invite him into your life to be your Lord and to be your Savior. Just repeat after me in this little simple prayer. And he will come in and make you a saved person. Please join me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that if you honestly prayed that prayer, you are now born again and that you're now headed to heaven. We believe that you're saved. We believe that you are, are the one who is, is on your way to heaven and we're going to join each other with our heavenly hope. Thank you for receiving Christ as your Savior. And for those of you who have received Christ, but for some reason or the other, you've been out of church or you need a church home or you're in between church homes, I recommend this one where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where he is the, the, the one who leads and guides us, where he's the center of attention and the main attraction. Jesus the Christ is. If you want to join our church, please do so by inboxing me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. We've had somewhere around five or six people join since we've been live, remote, and remotely broadcasting. You can do the same today. Inbox me and let me know that you want to join our church, want to be a part of our church. We've had people join by live broadcast. We've had people receive Jesus Christ by live broadcast. And we've had people who ask for prayer during a live broadcast. If this is you, this is your moment. 
We appreciate you joining us. We appreciate you being a part of our service. It is now time for us to have communion. Please, ma'am, please, sir, get your drink, get your crackers, get your bread. It is time for communion. We want to serve our virtual communion right now. And we are asking you to, to prepare for your communion. We want to serve communion to you. We want you to be a part of this great celebration. We want you to get to know Jesus through communion. Jesus says, as often as you do this, you show forth his death and suffering until he comes again. It's done through communion. So as soon as you can, get your crackers, get your bread, and we will have communion together. We will commune. We will commune together. We will commune together. Jesus says, for as often as you do it, it shows forth my death and my suffering until I come again. So please, ma'am, please, sir, we ask Sister Davis to come and join us for communion. And we want to, to join for communion. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for this table, the tables in every home, in every vehicle, for this bread and this drink. We thank you for the body of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. We honor him today. We honor what he has already done. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to be a part. We thank you for saving our souls. We thank you for making us whole. We thank you for the privilege of taking communion. We pray that you bless everyone who will partake today, that they drink or eat not damnation to their soul. Forgive us for sin. Forgive us for messing up. Bless us to confess our sins and move forward in your name. It's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Jesus met with his disciples. He held up the bread. He broke it. And he blessed it. And said to them, as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. Eat ye all of it. Then he held up a cup. He said, this is the cup of my blood for the remission of your sins. Drink me off it. Amen. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for the privilege of communion, for blessing us to be born again, to be saved, and blessing us one more time to Acknowledge what Jesus has done over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. He died for us, gave his blood for us, and rose from the dead for us. We thank God for the privilege of commemorating what Jesus has already done. Now it's offering time, and it's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is offering time. It's an opportunity for us to show forth our appreciation to the Lord through giving unto the Lord. We thank God for the privilege of giving to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a privilege to be able to give to the Lord. It's a privilege, it's an honor, another great opportunity to give to the Lord. And we thank God for this privilege of giving unto him. You can give by three ways. You can give by cash app. Our cash app is dollar sign NBC Souls or cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls is our cash app. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, put on there uh, your name and the address if you're giving for the first time. Please put your name and your address on the cash app down in the memo section. Uh, our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. 
Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is, as we lift up Jesus, he draws all men unto us. As we lift up Jesus, he draws all men unto himself, brother. He draws all men unto himself. He lift up Jesus. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. You want to use mail, you can do so by mailing it to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We're looking forward to receiving your gifts and celebrating the Lord with you. Thank you so much for joining us here today at nine at five at ten forty-five a.m. every Sunday morning. Thank those of you who joined us this morning. We had over eighty people join us for Sunday school this morning at nine o'clock. Thank you so much. I want to thank Brother Whitlock and Brother Miles for doing an excellent job in teaching us the Sunday school lesson day after day. We don't take it for granted that these men are, are studying well and being a part of our Sunday school class and teaching Sunday school lessons all over the world. And people as far as Alaska is uh, and uh, Hawaii are taking note of our Sunday school and our worship service. So at 9 o'clock on Sunday, at every Sunday, at these stations on, on, on Facebook Live, uh, we are we are doing our Sunday school lesson. We are doing our Sunday school lesson every Sunday at 9 a.m. And also, you can join us on Wednesday night at 7:20. Wednesday night at 7:20 p.m. Uh, for our sun our Bible study time. Wednesday night at 7:20 p.m. Uh, you can join us. So thank you for giving. To, to us during this time. God bless you for, for your gift. We are constantly praying for those who we've been praying for in our prayer requests. We want to constantly lift those people before the Lord. We are praying for Sister Johnny Woods. Sister Johnny Woods, we're celebrating Sister Johnny Woods today at uh, 4 p.m. We're celebrating Sister Johnny Woods. She is celebrating 90 years, 90 years. She just happened to be the most mature person at our church. She's 90 years old. We'll be lining up in front of the sanctuary on Old Chocolate Bayou Road. Old Chocolate Bayou Road that runs perpendicular to, to our street in front of the church, Shuma Road. We'll be lining up at 345 to celebrate Sister Johnny Woods and do a drive-through. Thank God we're not doing a drive-by. We don't do drive-bys because in the neighborhood I grew up in, drive-bys lead to death. So we're doing a drive-through to celebrate our sister Johnny Woods right there on our church campus. And if you want to send an offering, please note, notate that offering for sister Johnny Woods. She turned 90 years old. She's turning 90 years old and we're gonna celebrate today. So uh, New Beginning members and friends, please show up at 345 Line Up on Old Chocolate Bayou Road and we're gonna drive through to celebrate the birthday of our aged person at our church, Sister Johnny Woods. Amen. Also, this is your last opportunity to vote. We need to vote. We need to make sure we vote, make sure our voices are heard, our voices are seen. I stood in line for four hours myself. Um, this is your last opportunity. You, you don't want to leave the voting poll without voting, and uh, you need to make sure you vote. Um, I grew up in an era in the 60s where where they fought for the right to vote and they died for the right to vote. I remember the dogs, I remember the water hoses, I remember men and women being in jail and in prison. I still read and remember the stories of Fannie Lou Hamer, Jesse Jackson, Martin Luther King, Ralph Abernathy and all those people as they, they marched through the Mississippi Delta and they, they, they were abused and some of them were killed for the right to vote. So I will never neglect the right to vote and I want you to make sure you, you, you process your vote this Tuesday. Go ahead and process this vote. You can become a part of history 
Uh, we are making history because more people are voting now than ever have before. Even in the early elections, people are voting. So I'm saying to you, this Tuesday, this Tuesday, November the 3rd, you need to be seen, you need to be heard. Uh, if, you, if you are not, and this is a quote I've heard several times from Congressman Al Green, and that is, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. menu. And this is the time for us to be at the table. If we vote, vote your conviction, make sure that you're at the table. Don't be discouraged by the long lines. Don't be discouraged by uh, the intimidation tactics. Go out and vote. I stood in, four, in line for four hours, and um, it, was, it was a pleasure to stand there because I had a focus. And I had it in my mind that I couldn't leave this place without voting. Please, ma'am, please, sir, get out early. Go out to vote. They have several ways for you to vote. Uh, you, you can vote by drive up. You can, you can vote by standing in line. Uh, please, at this time, they're saying don't mail your ballots in because they're trying everything they can do to discourage and to eliminate over 100,000 mail-in ballots, drive-through ballots, and they're trying everything they can do to make sure the mail doesn't get there on time. I'm saying to you, go out and vote. <laughs> Uh, make your presence known and let people know that we are sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. If we miss this election, we have missed a great opportunity to state our case. Please, ma'am, please, sir, go out and vote. We got to do it. Amen. Thank you so much to our visitors. Thank you to our members. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, where we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Lord, we thank you now, Lord. We thank you that you are the real Christ. We thank you for blessing us to know you, to expect you, and to see you. We pray, Father God, that you give us a constant con a spirit of discernment, that we will know who you are, obey who you are, and a stranger we will not follow. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.